Hello viewer, my name is Ilena Hohme from the Edge of Convent Valley Road and this is Science Hub and today I'm with my colleague I'm Lara Mbithi, I'm also in Form 4, Naruto Convent Valley So today we're talking about Organic Chemistry Organic Chemistry 2 um, In Organic Chemistry 2 we mainly talk about alkanols, alkanoic acids and detergents So an alkanol is a type of a hydrocarbon which has hydroxyl group Examples of alkanols are methanol, ethanol, and propanol. So, alkanols are named by simply replacing the... <coughs> For example, if you're given an alkene, you, re you replace the E with an O to get an alkanol. So, if you have methane, you remove the E and you add the suffix O to form a... Uh, so we are going to go to naming of alkenes of sorry of alkanols so in naming of alkanols for example if you're given butanol which has the structure If you're given such a, an alkanol, this is butanol. So in order to name it, you have to first identify the longest carbon chain containing the hydroxyl group. So that is butanol. And then, since you know it's butanol, you get the first name from this uh, name. So you remove the oil to get butane. Then second, you number the carbon from the side which has the hydroxyl group. So you number one, two, three, four. So as you can see, the hydroxyl group is contained in the first carbon. So it will be butane. You put one, then you put a hyphen, then you name oil. So this is butane, one oil. So I'm going to take you through the second example. <coughs> so if it's not here, it's maybe it's in the second carbon, you simply have to replace this one with two. This number is the position of the hydroxyl group in the alkanol. So <coughs> there are very many different types of alkanols. Um, you can also have one which has a methyl group. In organic one, we learned that a methyl group is when, like, for example, if you're given methane, CH4, a methyl group is gotten from re removing one hydrogen from CH3. So a methyl group, this is a methyl group. You've removed one hydrogen. So if you put it... Here, like in the third carbon group, yeah, yeah. Then you take this, so you put it in the first carbon group. Then yes, as you can see, I've taken my methyl group to the first carbon. In the chain and then the hydroxyl is still in the first carbon so in order to get the name of this alkanol you just say um, you first identify the heavier side this is the heavier side which contains the methyl group so it will be it's in the first carbon atom so the first carbon chain so it will be uh, so the methyl it's one so methyl Butte one oil. So it should be methyl, which one oil. It's in the 
carbon, the first carbon as you can see, and there's a methyl, then there's the hydroxyl group. So my friend will take you through the operation of sorry methyl sorry um it will be methyl B turn one or two. So my friend will take you through the preparation of alkanols. Yeah. Okay, so before I start the preparation of alkanols, since the methyl group is in the first carbon, we put one a comma methyl written one word. Yes. Then next we go to preparation of ethanol. In the laboratory we mostly use ethanol among all the other alkanols so first we're going to take a beaker and we're going to put some starch yes starch a letter it about two starch with a spoon So we put the starch and then we add water and then we warm them together. Okay, so as it warms, I'll just take you through the procedure. So you're supposed to add starch water warm them together and then put and then stir it and make a paste then put yeast into the same solution then we transfer the yeast into this volumetric flask and then we stir it there for three days so that it can ferment so we already prepared a solution before that and then we distilled it and then we got this which is ethanol so Another way you can make ethanol is if you hydrolyze ethene. For example, this is ethene. Hydrolyzing, hydrolyzing basically means adding water. So you had, you add it to go. Then you get this bond is broken and becomes a single bond and becomes H C C H H Water is made up of hydrogen and hydroxide. So this comes here and this comes here. So next we go to physical properties of ethanol and she's going to take us through it. <coughs> so um, <coughs> some of the physical properties of alkanol, um, when you're talking about physical properties, um, you talk about the solubility, the pH values, and the boiling and melting points. So first you're going to start with the physical properties of ethanol since it's what we all use so ethanol as you can see is a colorless liquid with a characteristic smell there's a characteristic smell of ethanol and then its melting and boiling point is 114 degrees celsius and 
78 degrees Celsius. And then it is highly soluble in water because it is able to form hydrogen bonds with the water molecules. It's polar just like the water molecules. And then it's neutral to litmus paper. And the solubility of alkanols decreases with increase in the RMM, the relative molecular mass. This is due to the deduction in the strength of hydrogen bonds and Van der Waals forces. Then the melting and boiling points increase with increase in molecular mass because of the strength of hydrogen bonds is increased as you go down the group. So um, from there we'll move to the chemical properties of the alkanols. So first we'll start with reaction in air. Basically, reaction in air means burning, how it reacts with oxygen. So if we use limited air, we get carbon to oxide. But if we use excess air, we get carbon for oxide. That's when the difference comes in. Plus water. Next, we go to the reaction with metal. For example, if ethanol reacts with sodium, we'll get sodium ethoxide and hydrogen gas. So the hydrogen this, for example, over here, the hydrogen will be released and the sodium will replace the hydrogen in this. Next, you're going to look at reaction with organic acids. For example, if ethanol reacts with ethanoic acid, we'll get ethyl ethanoate plus water. We're going to do that practically so we can see how ethanol reacts with the ethanoic acid. Yeah. I'll let her do it. Yes. So here we have ethanol in a beaker and then we're going to add about two drops of concentrated sulfuric acid. We're going to handle this with care because it can burn. And then we're going to add ethanoic acid. And then warm the mixture. As she goes to get it, we're going to see what exactly happens. So, for example, if this is ethanol, which is the and it's going to react with ethanoic acid, which is H C C H H. And then here we have a double bond with oxygen, single bond with hydrogen oxide. So it's going to react, and this and this is going to dissociate and form water H two O. Then we're going to be left with H two C O C. which has a pleasant smell and now we have our ethanoic acid we are going to add it to what you had already made and after mixing when you waft it you will smell a sweet and pleasant smell next we are going to go to the effect with acidified potassium dichromate originally it's normally orange in color but when it reacts with for example ethanol it becomes green because it oxidizes the ethanol 
to ethanoic acid. Then the next chemical property is how it reacts with potassium permanganate, which he is going to take us through. So um, the color of potassium permanganate 7 is uh, purple. So when you bubble ethanol through the solution of potassium permanganate 7, there's a color change from purple to colorless. This is because um, the permanganate 7 Sorry, the permanganate 7 yes, are reduced to manganese, to ions, so um, it oxidizes the ethanol. So um, we are going to see the action of conk sulfuric acid on ethanol. So um, when you put when you put conk sulfuric acid in ethanol, there is gaseous ethene which is formed. Um, this is because um, the ethanol is dehydrated to gaseous ethene, so dehydration occurs, which an ether is formed. So you have to know the difference between an ether and an ester. An ester is a sweet smelling, it has a sweet smell and it's formed when ethanol reacts with ethanoic acid in presence of conk sulfuric acid and an ether is formed when conk sulfuric acid is, add is added to ethanol and the the ethanol is the ethanol undergoes dehydration as the process takes place so there are two things ethanol sorry ether and an ester so now let's move to uses of alkanols alkanols can be used as a solvent for example in preparing drugs yeah. another use of an alkanol is in alcohol Another name of alcohol is actually alkanol. So, and also antiseptics use alkanols so that they can make the antibacterial nature in the antiseptic. And in also in the manufacture of synthetic fibers, for example, PVC pipes, which is also known as polyvinyl chloride pipes, and polythene, which we'll later look at how it's made. Next is how fuels are made by blending ethanol for example with gasoline to make gasohol so that comes brings us to the end of looking at alkanols which is the first part of organic chemistry too next we're going to look at alkanoic acids so alkanoic, alkanoic acids are also called carboxylic acids and they have they are a group of hydrocarbons which contain a carboxyl group. So um, the alkanol, for example, for example, uh, <coughs> for example, um, methanol is C, Sorry, ethanol will be C two H four C O O H. So ethanol. Then let's move to propanol. Will be C three H five C O O H. So as you can see, um, alkanoic acids. So this was um, ethanoic acid and this one was propanoic acid. So as you can see, alkanoic acids have the general formula of CN, H2N, minus 1. Then the carboxyl group. This is the carboxyl group. This one, this one, this one. Then this one is the alkanol. Yeah. So um, um, before you continue, I'd like to make a point of correction. Um, over here, we're going to have three hydrogen because the total is supposed to be two, two, four. Then, this is not ethanoic acid, but it's actually propanoic acid because it has three carbons. Then, Yes, so the meaning continues like that. You look at how many carbons are found 
in the alkanoic acid. So next, we are going to look at physical properties of alkanoic acids. So solubility in alkanoic acid decreases down the group. So from methanol to decagon to decanoic acid, from methanoic acid to decanoic acid, the solubility decreases. While in melting point and boiling point, the, the melting point and sol boiling point increases down the group. Then we're going to look at chemical properties. She's going to take us through. But before we do that, this is what we were boiling in the beginning when we were making ethanol. We put starch and water. And then we are going to stir to make a paste. Okay. <coughs> So we've looked at the preparation of alkanoic acids, the physical properties, now we are at uh, the chemical properties. So first we're going to look at effect of universal indicator. So when you put universal indicator in the, in the alkanoic acid, for example, ethanoic acid, you notice that the color of ethanoic acid in universal indicator is five. This shows that it's a weak acid and um, the ethanoic acid dissociates to the ethanoic ions and the hydrogen ions, which give us the pH of 5. Then um, we are going to look at the effect of solid sodium carbonate. So when you put sodium carbonate in a solution of ethanoic acid, you notice that there is effervescence. Um, the, colors, the colorless gas produced is carbon 4 oxide and it forms a white precipitate with lime water. Then um, <coughs> the third reaction is reaction with metals. For example, what happens when you put ethanol, when you react ethanol with metals? Um, you note that um, <coughs> there's formation of uh, salt and hydrogen. So for example, if you take uh, magnesium, you're going to form a salt of magnesium and hydrogen. So, um, after that, you're going to move to reaction with sodium hydroxide. When you add, what happens when you add sodium hydroxide to the al al alkanoic acid? You're going to form a, you're going to form a salt of sodium plus water. You remember in metals, we were we are going to form a metal salt and hydrogen, but now we are going to form <coughs> when you react it with sodium hydroxide, you're going to form a sodium salt and water. So um, in, the, in order to know that hydrogen has been formed in the reaction with metals, um, when, you, when you introduce a burning splint into the test tube, you're going to see that um, it, there's a pop sound. So this indicates presence of hydrogen. So <coughs> we're going to move to uses of alkanoic acids. They're used as solvents and also they're used in the manufacture of drugs and chemicals, in flavoring of foods, and in the manufacture of synthetic fibers and preservation of food. So those are the, the uses of the alkanoic acids. So um, we come to the end of our discussion. That was Organic Chemistry 2. And I'm Elaine Wahome in Form 4, and this is my colleague. Lara Mithi, also in Form 4 from Loreto Convent Valley Road. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you.